In my understanding, the key player was the community. The community was identified by the facilitating organization, then Pamoya Trust, which was doing mobilization of community and all that. Pamoya Trust was an NGO then, working as an NGO. Then um, in addition to Pamoja Trust, there was the technical team that constituted of architects. At that time, there were also uh, engineers on board. And in addition to the qualified technical team, there was also participation of students from the university who came on board to do you know, background research on how the upgrading would be done. In fact, they made a proposal which heavily informed the solutions that came up also. They went, sat down, and came up with a proposal of how the upgrading would be done. And then in addition to that, we had also the uh, urban authorities that were also key in terms of coming up with certain decisions. Like I said, the special planning area provision that was purely the urban authorities. There were other NGOs that were also on board that came in to do you know, specific roles. Uh, and again, we had also you know, organizations from out there. I think at some point also the UN Habitat came on board, but just for a certain task that they wanted to carry out there. I think theirs was more to do with the documentation of the process at that point. So there were many actors in the process. And again, uh, I think the main actors that remained consistent all through was the NGO, the urban authorities, the community, and the technical team.